Hello and welcome back to On The Workman. Today we're taking a look at the Cobalt K-Stack three-piece storage system. This is the modular toolbox system available from Cobalt. So if you were to have this shipped to you, it might ship to you in a box something like this. It's rather sizable unless it's outside your front porch. I've already slid open the package here at the very top here to make this go a little bit faster. Let's take a look at what you get in the box. Maybe you can find this in store. If it's shipped to you, we've got some bubble wrap. And then we can take out this piece by piece. We've got the smaller uh, suitcase toolbox. We'll set that down. We've got that, and now we'll take the box and chuck that out of the way. There we go, there's our kit. You can find this in stores at many local Lowe's. And so what we got here is we have a three piece set here. Now at the very top here, we've got our tag that explains a little bit about the system, but it doesn't really show you that much. There's more to it than that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to cut off this tag and the zip tie that comes with it so we can open it up. Nice metal latches, lift it up. And inside this top one, let me get you a little bit closer. We've got a couple of these organizing boxes. Nice lid on it there. Dividers in, out, your choice. And those tuck away in the corner. You can see these have a little bit of room to move if you want. First thing you'll see in bright blue around the edges here, nice gasket to help to minimize water incursion. Hopefully there's minimal that gets in with the gasket there. You also see some mounting points up here on the lid. We'll get back to that here in just a bit. So that's our top box. Next thing here you see, there's this nice little flap here that pulls down. So what is that for? Well, you could actually label your toolboxes if you wanted to. You could get a label maker and put a little label right there, flip that up, and then it could say exactly what's in it. Is that uh, screws, bits, parts, or whatever it is, but you can have it nicely labeled for you. Also here in the front where that zip tie was, a little spot there, you could put a latch there to lock it shut. Now you don't wanna rely on that lock completely for security with these because obviously it is plastic and you could just cut it open. So also look in the top, we'll see this as it goes across here. We've got our latches for how we connect our boxes together. So if you wanna connect them, open them up and then latch them together in the middle. There's a couple little pop-up ones there for what I presume will someday be some half size boxes, not yet available that would take up half the size. We don't have those yet. Nice heavy duty latches. We'll unlock the bottom here, take this top one off. We'll work our way down the stack. So this is what, we'll, uh, what I'll call the medium box. Lift that open or lift that up on the latches. Flip that up. And now here we've got a tray. So we could easily put some screwdrivers in here. Let me just. There's a couple, here's a couple more screwdrivers that you could easily throw in there. And otherwise, we also see the mounting points there on the top. There also appears to be, if you can see, where you might be able to fit a divider or something in there, or a spot that you could go straight down. So far, there's not an official divider for this. And if I try to run this uh, tray like this, this does not quite fit as a obvious divider. You can sort of put it in like that. It does fit on the side there if you need to get that out of the way, or on the other side, like that, close it up. And you're good. All right, so that is the middle box. Let me get you a little bit closer now for the last box. Lift that up. Last box here, again, like all the other boxes, we've got this clear lid here. We can hide our labels behind. To open this up, lift our latches. And the first thing I see there, even with the handle on, the lid does still stay up. 
we've got the same tray that we had before. And let me get you a little bit closer. All right, now looking straight down, you can see we have a nice wide open area. There are some cutouts on either side for the wheels and a little ridge on the back. We see some other slots that are in there. And again, we also see some mounting points on the inside of the lid. Take note of that. We will have to circle back to that in a bit. That latches down. Now let's turn around. What do we have here? Well, we have our handle. How do we pull this handle up? One press right there. So in case you're wondering if you could put these on, we'll call it backwards. Let me just try this here for you. They do actually set in place backwards and you can lock that down to the stack. Oh, I didn't lock that bottom one there. But yes, these can be installed forward and backwards. I don't know why you do it, but they are rotationally symmetric. If for some reason you have a use for that, we'll put it back like that for right now. All right, so now that we look at this on the workbench here on the back side, look at the very bottom here, right there and right there. We push these switches here to the back. And then we come here and grab this handle here. Our handle completely removes, cutting down our height to fit in the back, perhaps under a tunnel cover. And now our max height on this box is checking in at just a smidge over 20, maybe 20 and a quarter inches tall. So hopefully that's enough room to get underneath a tunnel cover in the bed of your pickup truck uh, or other place that gives you some more options for how you can repurpose this. Something else here, let's take a look at this on the side here on the back. If you go like this, you can still roll it sort of on its back here. All right, so with that lid open, it's nice that it opened fully, even with the handle there. No prop rod, no gas struts necessary, it just stays open, so that's really nice. If we look at the depth of this box here, we're looking at about 14 and a quarter inches. And if we want to look at the width from either side to side, we're looking at an effective length of width, if I get that tray out of there, of about 18 and 3 quarter inches from side to side uh, within the box. Obviously, there's going to be some places in there where you might have a little, uh, a little more or a little less room. Uh, so obviously, your mileage may vary. So if we want to look at this case stack system compared to a few other systems, I'll put a few little pictures here if you compare this to how it uh, sitting side by side the flex stack pack right about now. You'll see that there's a slight subtle difference in the size. And now if we look at the Klein mod box stack, a little side by side comparison there. And now if we've got a little side by side comparison with the, co I'm sorry, with the Craftsman Versa stack. And now with the Craftsman Trade stack. So we can see all these systems are just slightly different in size. They're not compatible with, it, with the other systems for better or for worse. It is kind of its own ecosystem, if you will. Uh, so you just have to work with what you've got to make it work for you to make this your system. But Cobalt's got a few tricks up its sleeve to make this system a little more yours than maybe some other systems do. Starting off here with the labels, if that's your thing, you can label it. You could put your name there if you forget that they're your tools, or you can label what they are. We've got some other little slots right down here on the side where we can add some extra accessories, even on the bottom box to make this system into something a little more befitting of how you might use it. So let's take a look at some of the accessories that are available for this K-Stack system. Our first accessory is going to be a extension cord wrap that goes around the lower box. All these accessories come in the white box. We also have a box level holder. 
that's also intended, I believe, for the lower, taller box. And we have some metal mounting rails. You can put those belt clips to work and hang your tools on the outside of your box. So these are for the side of the boxes. We also have a bar here for the front of the box. And we also have a little strip here for a battery holder. I think that's kind of interesting. I wonder what all we might be able to do with that. Next, we have a charger mounting plate. And finally, this one may pique your curiosity just a bit. We also have the Cobalt 24 volt rapid charger, single battery rapid charger that we'll be looking at as well as one of the case stack accessories today. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and open up the level holder. Take this out of the box. We have our holder and no screw mounts required. Holes at the bottom so that if any water gets in, it doesn't collect debris in the bottom of the holder here. And this is all one unit, so this is designed for a level uh, and probably not gonna be so great if you've got a taller object like a broom that you might want to stack across multiple boxes. Our next accessory is the battery holder. Some instructions tucked in the rear there. And so now we have a two battery holding tray, one, two. Spot in the middle here is not for a battery. There's a little clip back there. And you can see on the instructions here, we've got some options where it could go on the inside, the outside, or some various locations around the case stack system for holding a pair of batteries, or you could even screw it to the wall to be able to store batteries in your workshop up against the wall. So you could buy a whole string of these and uh, link them up together. Our next accessory is gonna be the side tool rail two pack. So there are two of these. We got some screws. We got one rail, nicely stamped with the word cobalt in it. Another rail stamped with the word cobalt in it. And there is more in the package here. We've got a clip. Another clip for the other side and probably two more clips like that. There we go. Just like that. All right, so here is a assembled side rail here. You put a couple screws here across with these clips. So then you can pop either of these metal side rails in and out if you need to change this on the fly for however you're working to make it adapt to whatever situation you're taking these two next. So that one's together, just needs the screws put in it. We'll put the next one together. Like that. And then on the other side, just like that. Now here we go, fully assembled, screws all the way in, and then these will just clip into place on both of these. Obviously, depending on the size of your stack, you might need more than a pair. So this one here, I suspect will be a little similar. There's one bracket, bracket number two, a set of screws, our instructions, and the box. This looks like this will go together in the exact same way as the other one has the word cobalt stamped in it very nicely there. You can see that hopefully there. And then on these brackets here, you see there's these little square at the bottom, these round holes for screws at the top. Set that over the top like that. And then you can use your screws to hold that in place. I'll go ahead and put that together. And now fully assembled. Lots of space here to hang a drill, a hammer drill, an impact, uh, whatever other tools you need to hang uh, while you're in between tasks on whatever job you're working on. Our last accessory is the, bring it up there to the camera here, the 
two-piece charger mounting plate. So this one has lots of parts. So we've got plate one and plate two that are otherwise identical. We've got some locating pins on it here. And then we've got some clips here to, for holding some cords in place. We also have a couple of rods and some mounting screws. So something here I want to point out that was not immediately clear until looking at the instructions here is this will actually work with the original standard charger, the faster standard charger, the original rapid charger, and the version 2.0 rapid charger that I showed you a few moments ago. This is compatible with all of the single battery chargers. Very nicely done for that retroactive compatibility with all of the chargers. So it looks like you can fit up to about four of these into a box. Our final accessory is the rapid battery charger. Now this is a great accessory if you've got high performance tools that you need to charge quickly, especially on a job site. Now why do I say that? Because this is a 150 watt charger. Just for comparison, the we'll call it the old standard basic charger that looks like this is 45 watts. So this is more than triple the output to cut down on those charging times, especially if you're busy on a job site and you need to be able to get your batteries charged and keep them charged. Having a few of these around might be your ticket to success, especially because if you have several of these, then you can charge in parallel, whereas the four port charger, as seen right there, is sequential. So what do we get with this? Well, let's go ahead and open it up here. There's nothing really particular on the back that's of any interest here, other than the 150 watts. It's a single battery port. It does come in this blister pack. Not my favorite, but I understand why they have to do it like that, because some people just don't like to go to the store and pay for their tools for some reason. And it hurts the rest of us. All right, so coming out of the box, we have the charger. Buried in between the packaging here is the manual. Blink and you might miss it. And so this mounting plate here, if we look at it just in a vacuum here, just clips into place here uh, on the back of the charger. Now you notice how these are at a diagonal for those keyholes. Clips right down, but we're gonna have to fix this into the box in the appropriate place where we want this charger. And that prop rod will help to keep our cord from getting tangled and access to this. Because one of the important things with this is we do have air circulation to get to the batteries. All right, so the first accessory we're gonna install is the level holder. To do this, we're gonna have to open the case. And this one really only fits on the bottom rolling box, which kind of makes sense because if you're carrying around a four foot level, putting it any higher probably doesn't make a lot of sense. So you're gonna have some choice. And you can go either on the left or the right side of the stack. And there's a clip right here on the side that we're going to need. But note, there's also a little clip or a little slot right here. So now that you've got the lid open, we're going to go ahead and use these little tabs here at the top. And we're going to line it up so that it is hanging off to the front just slightly. And then we're going to line it up so then this tab sets in just like that. And then now our lid will actually secure that in place. And if we look at this from the front, now this is actually basically flat with the front. Which now gives way to our next accessory pair. Now there's gonna be some choice here for what we're gonna place at this location on the front of the box. We could either take this full width bar and clamp that in place here, which I don't know that I want to do that for my box set, but we'll put that aside. I'm going to put this extension cord set here. Now these are actually set 
where you want the words cobalt to be legible from the front. A little subtle Easter egg there. So this is just going to slide over right there, clip down, slide there, and clip down. There is no screws necessary to secure these. If for some reason you decide you want to take this off, you don't like it, lift the tab, pop it off, and you're good. And so now you can wrap an extension cord around here. Now just remember, when you're walking, that you've got your, uh, you give yourself enough space. You know, maybe you might want to put a little bit of orange tape on the side here or something to make sure you can see the side if you've got the extension cord. And you remember, you've got that extra weight right there in front of you. Or if the next time you decide you don't want this and you want to replace it with this, you've got choices. Looking at the other side, what we've got here is we still have this remaining tab right here that we could put a second level holder there if we so desire. We'll leave that one blank here. I don't have another level holder today, but obviously if you have two, you easily could. And maybe the other one, you put another tool in there that would make your life easier. All right, so now looking here at the bottom box here, we've got some choices here for what we're going to put across this tab and that tab. We could put another set of extension cord wraps if you need to carry another extension cord with you. Maybe you need to. Maybe you just need to roll up or coil up some Christmas lights. I don't know. You'd be the judge for what you might do with that. Or put the long steel tool rail there. That's what I'm going to do here. And this should just slide right over those tabs. Just like that, clips into place. And now I can securely hang some tools from it. So you can easily take an extension, or I'm sorry, a tape measure, take an impact driver. Now, be careful. If you forgot to put your clips on some of your tools, it won't work like for this light. It would if I still had it on, but I don't. And so, but if you notice how this impact driver is hanging down a little bit low, well, that could be an issue. If everything's all stacked up, that's fine. But one of the things you will notice here is I can still get to these latches to access that tool rail. So if I've already taken everything out that I need for what I'm working on that bottom box, other tools hanging here would be just fine. I can still open this lid right here with no problem. And then we've got the metal rails. I got a pair of these here. Now on this set here, you could easily use a second pair if you wanted to put these. Let me turn this to the side. One on each box, top and bottom, put them all on the same one. You could easily go through several sets of these to deck this out fully with all these accessories. I'm just going to go ahead and wrap the middle size box with these. Everyone's going to have their preferences on this. There we go. So now when it comes to mounting the battery charger plates, the top box in theory has the mounting holes here and you can even sort of set these charger mounts in here and have the holes line up. And you would think that that might be a good fit here on the top box like that. And it'll kind of even click into place. The one challenge is the rest of the details for the prop rod that'll help hold the lid open uh, do not exist. On the top box here, you have to go to the one of the lower two boxes to make that work. And now we're going to add the charger mount and charger to, at least in my case, I think I'm going to go with the middle box because the lid's going to have to be open for the cord to come out. And I like the fact that this, with the metal rails on the side, I can have tools hanging down below. And so it, to me, I think it makes the most sense to put in the middle box, obviously. Uh, your mileage may vary for where you think it'll be most effective for you, and maybe I'll revisit for what I think makes sense for me. But today we're gonna go with putting it in the middle box. I'm gonna start by opening up the box. And I'm gonna take out the trays here. I don't think I need both trays right now. One of those trays actually belongs in the lower box. And so now before I go too far, one of the things with the kits is there's actually a lid prop that goes here that you should, uh, you can lock the lid open. 
And so we'll go ahead, go ahead and start with that. So in your, in your bucket of parts that you've got, so in the bag of parts that you've got, there is this neodymium magnet that you can get. And then there's another one, this little, uh, looks kind of like a doorbell housing, if you will. We'll just go in and put our neodymium magnet in the back. And that should pop in something like this. So that looks something like that. Hopefully you can see that. And then this is gonna mount right up here like that. So then we'll get out a couple screws and a, and a number two Phillips screwdriver. And we'll go ahead and screw this into place. If you're wondering what this is gonna be for, this is gonna help to hold the lid prop up and out of the way when not in use. All right, so then we're gonna take the saddle looking piece here and the prop rod, we're gonna have the hook pointing to the outside of the case. So it's gonna go like this, saddle up there. Then we're gonna put that right here. You notice that that clips in right there. Then we'll get two more screws and screw this in place here. And so now with this one, there's a little groove Right here, in fact, there's a couple grooves here on the side that you can use that will keep the lid from closing. In other words, and pinching off the, the charger. You can also have it like that. There's another little spot there. And then that's it. So you've got a couple different settings for where you want to prop your lid up at to keep it from falling forward. Or fold it out of the way like that. Now, what I think is interesting is, interesting is the fact that this kit comes with two one for each side of the same lid. This is where I think it actually might be kind of useful to have a couple of these kits because one kit includes two charging plates. So you can mount two chargers on this case. Uh, it seems like for this, you know, maybe it'd be worthwhile because you can put the same prop rods on the lower case as well that maybe getting a couple of these to mount in both the mid case and the lower case. At the very least for the prop rods, I think it would make a lot of sense. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the prop rod on the other side, and then we'll be right back. And now with both prop rods in place, I can drop those down. And I'm gonna grab one of my plates. I'm gonna put this one here just at the lower side like this. Now looking at the screws, it looks like you get four screws per plate. And on this one, in this orientation, there's one, two, three, four, could be up to five holes. So you have to figure out which one doesn't get the screw. And then on the other side here, you can put another one there or another one up top. It's up to you for whatever orientation you want to use. It looks like up here, you've got one, two, three, four. There's not one in the middle. So obviously there's a little bit of variance for how you might go with that. Now I'll go ahead and start putting some screws in here. And now from the second plate, I'm gonna go ahead and mount it right up here. One of the things that's gonna be important for you to figure out is how you wanna configure your chargers in the case, because there are some combinations that may not work for where you think it may work. So for example, this lower plate here does not, is not gonna be compatible with uh, certain charger combinations, the rapid chargers, the faster ones that are wide because of that latch location. So you may have to do a little bit of trial and error to figure out what is going to be your ideal uh, combination. And keep in mind when the lid goes down, those chargers that are on the lid are going to consume space that is otherwise down inside of this case. Now when it comes to mounting chargers here, in the case, you're gonna think a little bit about orientation and spacing. Something I figured out here is it seems like there's maybe some combinations that will work, some combinations that won't work that may affect your spacing. So in the, to me, the holy grail be having, we have a case full of these fast rapid chargers, you know, or maybe it's a case full of some combination of these or a mix and match of those. Or maybe you have to go with the good old standby regular charger. So I know I definitely want to use one of these chargers in here, but I've noticed that if I try to use just 
this charger and I'm not careful, not thinking through where I'm going with this, I'm going to run out of space. So for example, if I mount that charger there, first of all, you see how that fell off because that didn't actually close right. So that doesn't work there. So this is going to have to mount up here at the top, which is fine. Like that. Okay. But now how much space do we have left here? So to me in the Holy Grail, I'd like to be able to add this charger. And if I could have it in this orientation here, but the problem is where these holes are relative to the amount of space that's left just doesn't work. So even if I were to pull this off and we put this one on first, now let's try going sideways. like that, just for the record, that does close like that. And then we try to add this charger to it. I can set it on the peg, but it won't clip into place. I'm just off by just enough that this charger is just large enough that I can't click those two together. So if I want to have these two chargers, this one's going to have to be moved over here or otherwise moved. But what I can put with this one, let me take this one off and this orientation will be to use the regular charger. Click it in like that, closes no problem. And then put the rapid charger like that so we've got those two chargers. Everything closes, as you can see. No problem. Obviously, it's a little bit wonky and top heavy with this, but it certainly still works that you've got your chargers there. And then there's that prop rod to help hold it up. And then we've got our cords here. So what I think would be great for this is if there was like a little accessory that you could plug all this into uh, to be able to have a power source or to be able to have like a power strip that mounts in here, I think it could be great and a nice little accessory that would be great for them to come out with. They don't have that at this point. The final accessory today we need to talk about is this battery holder here. Like I mentioned before, this is a two battery holder, one, two. This can fit two batteries side by side. So we can take a two amp hour battery like this, click it in place. And now you're asking, well, what about the large ultimate output batteries. Well, let's just jump right up to the eight amp hour batteries. Just click that in place. Plenty of room side by side. Now, what can we do with this? Let's take, go to the side of our case stack system. Now on the side of our system here, if I use that little short rail, it also works for the long rail. I can just simply take this tray of batteries and click it in place just like that. And, it'll, and it fits almost perfectly on the side. Now, one of the things that's a little bit quirky about this is that if I go to pick up a battery, that's fine with the heavy one. But if I pick up that last battery here, you see how that kind of picked up there just a little bit? Because what's a little bit interesting about this is at the bottom here in the middle, in my opinion, they should have put just a little bit of a barb right there so it would snap on and hold on to that tray just like that. They didn't, but I don't know. There's still other options we can do with this battery tray. Next, we'll look at the top box. And if we open this up, there is this little, uh, what appears to be a spot for a divider. And guess what? This battery tray actually fits in that perfectly. And in that configuration, you can put a two, a four, or a six amp hour battery and still have the lid closed. In this configuration, with, and it just hold, uh, will hold one of those, it will not work with the larger ultimate output batteries. Your lid gets stuck and doesn't actually close in that configuration. So that's one place we can uh, locate this inside of our system. Now we're at the mid box and at this mid box, if I open up the lid, I've got some chargers up there on the lid. One of the things I also can do is I can fit this battery tray off to the side just like that where then I can click a battery in place there 
and another battery in place there. So the one thing to be aware of here, just because you can fit the tray here on the side, also works on the other side. If you've got a charger mounted up there, you may not be able to close the lid. So in this case here, I'm going to pop this charger off. And you can see the battery tray right here, which I can reach in and just pull out and set on the side, or I can sit this right in like that. And even with that ultimate output battery, it will close right there in that configuration in that mid box. So that was on the right. Use this little mid, this little gap right here to pull it out, turn it around, place it on the other side so you can hold several of those trays in that mid box. Now, in case you're wondering, here's a look at the bottom rolling box. We'll take the same tray of batteries. And unfortunately, you would think this might click in or set in on the side over here. Not so much. Or on the other side, it doesn't work in this lower box as you might expect it to. So this is a scratching the surface today on this Cobalt K-Stack system. I know there's a lot more we can talk about. Today's video was a little bit longer than I wish it would have been. So thank you for sticking with me. If you made it all the way to this point, go ahead and click that thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, click the subscribe button. There will be more content about this Cobalt K-Stack system coming up very soon, including a couple odd twists that you might be just a little bit surprised about. So thank you also to the folks behind the scenes at Cobalt for helping make today's video possible. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day. Bye.